and these are the, um, you know, sort of a selection of the building frame systems uh, for braced frames, steel braced frames. And you can see for each seismic design category, uh, there is, for B through F, there is a limit on the height building for each frame system, and we'll take a closer to look at what these limits are for the five systems, uh, four systems, excuse me, that we'll talk about today. Uh, steel special plate shear walls uh, also listed in, in this section, selection from the table, um, and is also in chapter F of the seismic provisions, but we will not be covering um, special plate shear walls in this discussion. It is a different behavior uh, and um, a different kind of system that we'll, we won't cover. This table also gives you the, uh, the R values, um, the overstrength factors, etc., for each system. But I also want to highlight that there is a seismic force resisting system uh, that has a long name here, the, and, and is steel systems not specifically detailed for seismic resistance. And that excludes cantilever column systems, and we're not going to talk about cantilever column systems. Those are uh, considered like moment frame systems. But really, this is sort of known as the R equals 3 system. This is what the kind of response you would expect from a steel building that is not specifically detailed for seismic resistance. Uh, and that means that the seismic provisions are not used, not required. And this is the level of ductility, et cetera, that you would get from just using the main specification. You can see that these. Uh, this system is allowed in seismic design category B and C, and there is no limit to the height of the buildings in those two categories. However, this system is not permitted, NP, in high seismic, or D, E, and F. So basically, uh, if you can use this system, then the AISC seismic provisions are not required. And my recommendation here is, if you're in seismic design category B and C, go ahead and use this system. Uh, you will get, for the most part, you'll get higher forces to design your system for because the other systems have higher R values. However, the overall cost and the detailing requirements, the connections, the effort that it takes to design will be much less for this so-called R equals three system uh, than for the high seismic uh, requirements. But having said that, the, the rest of the discussion today will be assuming we are using one of the high, uh, one of the systems that uh, require the use of the seismic provisions. So if we look at the limits for the steel, ordinary, concentrically braced frames from AASCE 7, uh, we can see seismic design category A, B, and C, uh, again, sort of the low to, to mid seismic uh, there is no limit to the height of uh, OCBFs, which is sh short for ordinary concentrically braced frames. There's no height limit. But there is a pretty strict height limit in seismic design category D and E of 35 feet. And it's uh, not, this system is not permitted in seismic design category F. However, if we look at the footnotes and the uh, et cetera for the table, there are cases where you can extend the height uh, or the applicability of an ordinary concentrically braced frame. In this case specifically, if you're in seismic design category D, E, and F, OCBFs are permitted for one-story buildings uh, with a height of 60 feet or less, and basically when you have a light dead load. So the dead load of the roof does not exceed 20 PSF. It's also allowed in penthouse structures.